So far we've looked at measuring the strength of the association between two variables. We've also looked at constructing a linear model and we've explored a little bit with residuals to see is our model producing uh, reliable results or not. But we want to sort of formalize this whole process to come up with a more direct way of saying yes this linear model is valid, it's going to generate good predictions for future unknown values, or it fails some particular condition, so it's not going to be a reliable model. So in order for our regression model to be valid, there are three conditions that we need to verify. Our populations must have a linear trend, since again for our purposes we're really just looking at linear relationships between data. Our residuals so the errors between our observed values and our predicted values must come from a normally distributed population. And we must have standard deviation that's the same for all values of our predictor variable. For our purposes, we're going to look at verifying the first and second conditions. And we're just going to assume that that third condition is met. Um, the textbook talks about it a little bit, but it's just not something we're going to focus on for our purposes in this class. So we've calculated R and used it to measure the strength of association, specifically the strength of the linear association, if one exists. But that value for R is just a sample statistic, just like the sample mean only told us about sample data where you're considering. It doesn't tell us about the population. So what we need to do, since this only tells us about the correlation in our, or association in our sample data, we need to test the claim that the two populations share an association. So we're going to use that value for R as our estimator for the population correlation coefficient and see if we can conclude that the population share an association. So for our null hypothesis, we're always going to have the same statement. We're going to start with the null hypothesis that the slope in our linear model is equal to 0. If the slope is equal to 0, that's essentially the same thing as saying no association exists. So for these tests, that's always going to be our starting assumption. We assume that no variables have associations unless there's enough evidence to convince us to throw out that original assumption. The alternative statement then could be a statement that our slope is something greater than 0, our slope is something less than 0, or our slope is simply not equal to zero. So we'll determine which of those alternative hypotheses is appropriate by looking at that correlation coefficient. So if our correlation coefficient is positive, we would want the alternative hypothesis to be that the slope is positive. If the correlation coefficient is negative, we'd want the alternative to say that the slope is negative. And in the statement that the slope is not equal to zero, technically works for either of these cases. It's just not as strong of a conclusion. So if we end up concluding that the slope is not equal to zero, we don't come up with a firm statement that the slope is greater than zero, less than zero. So we don't come up with a statement about whether that association is positive or negative. So we generally want to stick with one of the two strictly greater than or strictly less than statements. And again, we'll look at our sample statistic that value for R to determine which of those would be appropriate. We can use the value for R, as I just said, to determine that value for the alternative hypothesis. And then our conclusion will determine what we say about any association between these two values or two variables. So if our p-value is less than or equal to our significance level of alpha, we'll reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the slope is either greater than, less than, not equal to, whatever our alternative statement says, different than zero somehow, meaning a linear association exists. 
So if we reject the null hypothesis, we can conclude that a linear association does exist between the two populations, and we verified that first condition. If our p-value is larger than our significance level, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our slope is equal to zero, meaning no linear association exists. So if we reject the null hypothesis, we'll keep going. We'll try to confirm the next condition or verify that next condition. But if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, conclude no linear correlation exists, no linear association exists, then at that point, we're already concluding that the model is not valid. And we can stop this entire process. There's no point in going on and constructing the model or verifying the normality of the residuals because the first condition has failed. Now, in more advanced stats courses, there are alternatives we can turn to. But for our purposes, we're just looking at this one approach to regression and constructing these models. So for our purposes, as soon as one of these conditions fails, that process just comes to a stop because we can already say that our model is not going to be a valid model.